Hello, I'm going to talk you through the uh, Dixon et al study. Um, in terms of the theory behind the study, the suggestion is that accents may affect what people think about the people that are speaking. So if you think about some of the accents that are around kind of just the UK, there may be some accents that you kind of judge a person for. So for example, if you were to hear somebody from Birmingham and their accent, uh, because it's a slower accent, so they don't speak as fast as other accents, you might have the interpretation that they are slower in terms of how they think and therefore are not as intelligent. And that might have other consequences if you are judging them for criminal behaviour. Uh, similarly, if you hear someone with um, a Liverpoolian Scouse accent, again, you might have you know associations with that accent and what that person might be like. Uh, you might have um, associations with people that are from Essex. Uh, so all different kinds of accents may make you kind of almost be prejudiced towards that person and make judgments on that person without actually knowing what they're really like. There is some suggestion that this evaluation depends on social linguistic context. So if you have the same accent as the person that is speaking, then you will not judge them in this negative way. Um, it's usually when the person's accent is different to yours and that they sound different that uh, we start to kind of become more prejudiced in our associations with it. If you are somebody who knows a lot of people from Birmingham, you might not then have a negative connotation with that accent because you know lots of people and it can kind of almost dissolve that prejudice. So it does very much depend on who it is that um, is making the judgment and what their accent's like in comparison to the person that they're listening to. So if you think of that in kind of like a courtroom situation, um, if you are being kind of tried for a, a crime, you're the defendant, um, or I guess even if you're the witness, um, if somebody in the jury has a similar accent to you, then it's not a problem, regardless, you know, it doesn't matter what your accent is. But if your accent is very different to everybody else's, um, then you might end up um, having people judge you based on that characteristic that you have. Um, apparently standard accents are rated more positively than non-standard accents. Um, so a standard accent is kind of almost like when you're speaking properly, like you're using proper English, um, which I'm not doing right then. Uh, I have a very strong accent, so I would be a non-standard accent. Um, the idea is that if you speak properly, you're more competent and you have more status. You're perhaps more educated um, and therefore, you know, in, in a crime situation, you're less likely to have committed a crime. Unless, of course, it's something um, that requires intelligence to commit the crime. So we'll come on to that later. Uh, it's been found that third class urban accents, so accents that are from kind of like city areas, um, are more negative than rural regional or British received pronunciation accents. Um, so, you know, if you've got kind of like a Cockney accent uh, in London um, or kind of like, I'm trying to think of all the city accents that there are, um, or a Manchester accent, uh, our, our kid, you know, that kind of accent. Um, I don't know why I just did that. That's so funny, isn't it? Um, it's well put me off. So, yeah, you, you're kind of viewed as being more negative, uh, you know, more associations with kind of bad behaviour like crime um, than if you're in a rural. I mean, I guess my accent's quite rural. So a lot of people have told me that my accent is um, like quite like warm and, uh, you know, like, you know, I say love a lot and stuff like that. Um, and if you've got a British received pronunciation uh, accent, this is where you kind of are like um, proper in the way that you speak. Uh, you know, if you come from places like, I don't know, Harrogate or um cheshire uh preston um it's actually quite a, a kind of properly speaking accent in comparison to the environs around it um as well a foreign accent undermines a person's credibility so imagine if you go to france and you start talking with your gcse french to french people they'll think you're an idiot because you're not speaking properly in, in French. And it's similarly when other people are, you know, it's really difficult to learn a language and to speak in the accent that is is that, you know, language. Um, when I speak French, 
I have to put on a French accent so that it sounds French. Um, so I can't like be like, bonjour, uh, je m'appelle Sam, you know, like, because that's like not the way that they speak. It'll be bonjour, je m'appelle Sam. So you've got to kind of like put the accent on so that you are, you know, speaking the way that they are. So if you don't do that um, and you don't change your accent in that way, then you will be kind of viewed uh, negatively. Because the thing is, if it's difficult to understand somebody, you think that it's them that have the issue in terms of they can't communicate. And so they kind of judge that kind of more negatively. Um... So if you think about it in a courtroom, we've got um, some research by Segi in 1983 that investigated three local accents. So British received pronunciation, broad Australian and Asian. Um, and we're seeing whether or not, you know, the people in the jury thought that um, the person was guilty. So remember, this topic is all about what the jury are thinking, how the jury are affected by the characteristics of a defendant. An accent is a characteristic of the defendant, as is attractiveness, as is... Um, you know lots of other you know physical attributes about a person and what they found was that uh, the suspect's accent significantly influenced the rater's response um and this varied depending on the type of crime so they investigated blue collar versus white collar so the reason it's called blue collar and white collar is because if you imagine um a business person they usually wear white shirts so they have white collars um, and they are more like, you know, those types of crimes are probably more likely to commit um, things to do with finance, you know, fraud, um, you know, embezzlement, stuff like that, that requires a little bit more intelligence to be able to pull off. Whereas a blue collar crime, if you think about um, where someone would have a blue collar, things like manual jobs, like where you wear overalls, like in a factory or fixing a car, uh, the kind of blue collar jobs. And so in order to kind of do those jobs, you need to kind of be able to, um, you know, use your body to do your job. So you've got to be quite physically fit. And so therefore, you know, crimes such as burglary and, and robbery and um all those kind of things, assault, are probably more associated with blue collar uh, workers. So they call them blue collar and white collar crime. Um, this also found that more guilt was attributed to broad Australian accent when the suspect was accused of assault, so a blue collar crime, whereas more guilt was attributed to the uh, regional, uh, sorry, the received pronunciation accent uh, when they were accused of theft, so white collar crime. So it's almost like if you've got an accent which is quite broad and quite you know regionally specific um then you are more likely to be found guilty of blue collar crimes because that's the kind of perceived stereotype that if you have that accent that's the kind of job that you would do whereas if you speak properly or what's considered to be you know i'm putting like if you could see me i'm doing kind of like air inverted commas um if you speak in a way that's considered standard in received pronunciation then you're more likely to be accused of a white collar crime because the idea is that that accent is more intelligent and therefore your intelligence to a white collar crime it kind of all links together that way um so this has kind of got an interaction between accent and crime type now if you have a regional accent and you're accused of a white collar crime you're probably less likely to be found guilty so it's not that just having an accent means that you're more guilty it's the type of accent and the context of the situations so of the type of crime that you've been accused of so it's, a, it's an interaction it's a little bit more complex than just saying that accent means that you're going to be more guilty it doesn't it depends on the situation the crime that you've been kind of accused of the background research also shows that the brummie accent so from birmingham has been um kind of evaluated since the 1970s it's one that you know, because everyone's got this kind of cultural attitude towards it they've kind of done research on it and it is uh, viewed more negatively than either rural regional or received pronunciation accents um we've got some research um by pfeiffer and ogloff in 1991 a mock trial experiment found that students rated black defendants more guilty than white defendants particularly when the victim was white now there's loads of research um into um racism um and how that impacts in a courtroom situation particularly in america so we've got more research there by stewart in 1980 found that actual trials in the usa uh, black defendants received longer sentences than white defendants for the exact same offense and in a mock jury study gordon found that black defendants were accused of assault um, and evaluating guiltier than white defendants who were similarly accused there's research by Eberhardt who's found that 
black people are found to be um you know certain characteristics on their face mean they're more likely to get the death sentence because they look more death worthy so there's a lot of racism a lot of um kind of prejudice happening that people probably aren't aware that's happening um it's almost like the stereotype is if you are black then you commit criminal offenses um you know we know in england that um if you're a black male a uh, young black male you are more likely to be stopped and searched than than anybody else uh, because of these characteristics and these stereotypes and the interpretation of them people are being treated unfairly and so this is something that really needs to be investigated because our court systems are not fair if you've done the same crime as somebody else why are you not getting the same sentence as them why is someone getting a different sentence because they've got a different color skin it's not fair and it shouldn't be happening so you know we've talked here about characteristics so we've got um accent we've got crime type we've got um you know whether they're black or white there's lots of different things that are interacting um we've got more study in south africa so this is a world thing that's happening everywhere Found that a colored suspect who switched from english to cape african speech so do two different um kind of um what's the word languages uh, was rated more guilty by um, white English speaking listeners than a suspect who didn't exhibit speech divergence. If you diverge in your speech, if you if you switch accents or anything like that whilst you're talking, um, you're viewed as being more negative. And you know that maybe that's because it's kind of like why are you switching accents? You know, I don't know if you've been around people who are speaking in a foreign language, but sometimes you think, oh, they're talking about me, like you know, because they're looking my way, but because you can't tell what they're saying. Um, you judge people kind of negatively and there's almost like an association there that they're trying to trick you um, and therefore maybe that means that they're not honest and, and they have kind of you know committed crimes um, and it was says here as well that it was um, stronger if the suspect was accused of a blue collar crime such as assault rather than white collar such as check fraud so the accents having a, a, a greater you know the, the kind of um, interaction there between the race between the accent and between um, the the crime type. So this study by Dixon et al is kind of looking further at this Birmingham accent um, and also kind of looking at race and also looking at um, I don't know why I'm saying looking at because my because my students because you I mean uh, do that you always say I'm looking at this you're not really looking at how you're investigating it so we're investigating it um, and also crime type. So it's a lab experiment now you've got to rem remember about a lot of the research that's in this area you can't actually go into a real court case and affect how the court case is going because you know that's what lawyers do like they're they're the ones that kind of construct things and try and win their side regardless of whether you know the person's done it or not you know you've got a defendant you've got a prosecution a uh, defense prosecution they're going to you know argue for their side regardless of what the actual truth is um so as a psychologist you can only really investigate court cases that have already happened so you can look at statistics you can look at you know we said before about the research which shows that that black defendants are more likely to get you know harsh sentences for longer uh, than white we can look at statistics for that in terms of what's actually happening in the courtroom we have to do a lot of kind of mock the juries so you know juries that are kind of like pretend juries with pretend cases or even like real cases but that have already happened that you kind of deal with a mock jury so a lot of the research probably lacks validity probably isn't like what you'd actually find in a real situation you know the mock jury are usually students you know they're not they're not usually like a variety of people and actually in this study uh, you know it's taking place in the psychology department at the University of College at Worcester, Worcester Worcester you know what Worcester Worcester is that, mm, yeah um, it's 119 white undergraduate psychology students and there's a lot of you know women in the sample there's 24 men and 95 women it's not a representative sample that like if you're on a jury you're going to get a mixture of people um who are on the electoral roll on the electoral register um called up for jury duty um lots of different ages lots of uh, ethnicities class race you know that's not what's being found in this sample so these results you've got to kind of question them as to how valid they are is what this study is suggesting actually true might not be this was in a real court case you know it's quite serious you're affecting someone's life maybe it would be different so you always bear that in mind when we look at this research it is telling us something about how characteristics affect um rations of guilt but it's not telling us everything because actually 
uh, there could be more to it. You know, it might not happen the same in an everyday situation in an actual real court of law. Um, you know, the way that it's been set up, you haven't got kind of like, you know, lawyers there arguing the cases and stuff. Usually you're reading off transcripts and things like that. So it's not like being in a real court case. So the jury might be, respond very differently. Um, so we've got um, three main IVs that uh, participants are allocated to. The way that they've kind of manipulated this is they've got a two minute recorded conversation which is based on a written up transcript of an interview that happened in a police station between a suspect and a police officer. Um, but they've just changed it a little bit. So in the description of the suspect, they can describe them as white or black. Um, and as in the description of the crime, they either describe it as armed robbery or check fraud. So you've got the two variables being manipulated within the transcript. And then the other variable of accent is being manipulated by um, someone who's got a Birmingham accent, but he's a natural code switcher. So they probably lived in Birmingham for a bit and then moved away and lived somewhere else. So they can change their accent so that they don't speak in a Birmingham accent anymore, probably because they've realised that they get negatively, you know, judged by having a Birmingham accent. So they probably changed it. Um, so they can be, they can switch between the two. So the aim of this is each participant is going to have a condition where they've either got a Birmingham accent or a received pronunciation accent. So, you know, a standard one. Um, they've got a crime that's blue collar or white collar. So check fraud or robbery. And then they've got whether the suspect is black or white. So they're manipulating all of those variables and participants will only be in one variation of that. So, you know, one participant might be in a condition where they've got Birmingham accent, blue collar crime and um, the victim's black. Sorry, not the victim, I'm talking about the suspect black. Or someone else might have Birmingham accent, uh, blue collar crime, but the suspect's white. Or it might be that the um, accent is standard, a uh, received pronunciation accent, and um, it's a white collar uh, crime, check fraud, and the suspect is black, or the suspect is white, or, you know, all these different variations have been manipulated to try and figure out what impact they're having on whether people find them guilty or not. And this is called a match, guys, because it's the same thing that's being done, but there's just slight tweaks that have been manipulated. Um, and the kind of... Um, Participants were asked after they'd listened to the transcript to um, complete two rating scales. So the first rated the suspect's guilt on a seven point scale, which was uh, on one end it was innocent, on one end it was guilty. So that's called a bipolar scale because it's got two poles. Um, and the second is that they completed a speech evaluation instrument to measure their attitudes towards language. Now, the reason they did this was because if you were listening to an accent, they want to know what the opinions are of that accent. What are you viewing it as? So, you know, if you listen to an accent such as the Birmingham accent, Brummie accent, you're thinking that it that it's quite slow. They're not intelligent. So not a very attractive accent, probably inferior uh, and whatever, whatever, whatever. So this instrument tells you about what the perception is of the accent, because if you know people with a Birmingham accent then you won't perceive it like that so if we measure what they think of the accent then that will tell us if that is what is causing them to rate them as guilty or not so we need the two measures together uh, they didn't include anybody from Birmingham in the sample for the for that reason because uh, they wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to have a you know an impact on it because if you have got a Birmingham accent you're not going to be bothered by the Birmingham accent in fact you probably would be more offended by the received pronunciation accent but then you know television shows and stuff usually have received pronunciation accent it used to be that you couldn't um, be a news reader if you had a regional accent. They've changed that now, but back in the day, that's what it used to be. So all television shows and things like that, it always used to be received pronunciation, always. You were deemed as lower and inferior if you had an accent, uh, which is, you know, funny, isn't it, really? Um, what they found was that the Brummie suspect was rated more guilty, so 4.27 as the mean, rather than the received pronunciation suspect, 3.65. Now, bear in mind, the only thing that's changed is the accent. The crime's the same. You know, um, everything else is exactly the same. You know, they've manipulated it. The only thing that changed was their accent and they got more guilty ratings. Uh, there was an interaction uh, between if someone had a Birmingham accent, they were a black suspect and a blue collar crime. They had more guilt ratings than any other variation of all those three different variables. And when they did an analysis of the speech instrument, they found that superiority and attractiveness were what 
affected the guilt rating. So if the accent was perceived as attractive and it was, you know, someone who was attractive had that accent. If you think about it, if a lot of people in the media speak, you know, with a received pronunciation accent and they're all very attractive, then you might associate those two things together. And similarly, it's superiority. You know, a lot of people who are educated professors will never speak in a received pronunciation accent. Um, and I remember actually being taught as a teacher that I had to change the way that I spoke so that I spoke clearer so people would understand me. But actually what that kind of is doing is it's perpetuating this idea that we should all be speaking a received pronunciation accent and it's alienating lots of people that have regional accents and making them think that they've got to change the way that they speak just so that they can be accepted. Um, so I kind of rage against the system and just continue to speak in my broad Chorley accent. Uh, so essentially what this is showing is that in a British context, attributions of guilt are affected by accent and Britain is a, a place that has so many accents, like where I live, you go five minutes down the street and someone's got a different accent to you. So, you know, people have accents, you know, quite regularly. And it's the same when, you know, in, in America and in France and Germany, there's lots of accents that go on. You probably don't notice them as much because it's not your, your language, uh, but there is. So, you know, this means that the court systems are not fair, not effective. Um, Non-standard English speakers are perceived as guiltier than standard speakers. So regional accents um, and city accents considered to be uh, guiltier. If you speak with a Brummie accent, you deem to be more guilty than received pronunciation. Um, if you are accused of a blue collar crime and you're black and you speak with a Brummie accent, more likely to be perceived guilty. So that's one of the findings we mentioned before. Uh, so there's, you know, all the conclusions are basically a repetition of the findings. Um, so there you are, Dick Snettel is showing that we need to improve the court system, ideally. Um, and, you know, the 10 marker, which is using the research by Dick Snettel, explain how juries can be persuaded by the characteristics of witnesses and defendants. You kind of trying to say that if a witness or a defendant has attributes such as accent, crime type, uh, race, then the, it's going to affect how the jurors think of them and therefore what their attribution of guilt is. And the question might be slightly different. It might be trying to challenge you more. And it might be like, how could you improve the court system? Well, think about it. Do you actually need to see the suspect? You know, does that suspect need to be in court unless they are being questioned? Um, you know, for their testimony, does do they need does the jury need to actually see the person? Could they not just listen to what they've got to say, but maybe in a received pronunciation accent or if they've been accused of a white colour crime in a different accent, like could things be done so that it's reducing the impact of it? Somebody in my class mentioned to put the voice through a voice modulator so that it removed the accent uh, so it wasn't an issue. Um, you know, have the suspect behind a screen so you don't see what they look like. Um, you know, if you remember what we did right in the beginning, we talked about an expert witness. Maybe we could bring a psychologist in to tell the jury that this is what happens, that all this research shows that it has an impact and to be mindful of that while they're making the decisions. So there are a few things that we could do that could help the court system, whether they'd be practical and they'd let us do those things in, in our British law system. Probably not, not within the next, you know, few years, but maybe in the future it will become fairer um, and it won't be so much of a an issue anymore because we're finding that this, this is make it, making our legal system very unfair. Um, so you'd have to make sure that you linked in that essay question back to how those characteristics of the defendant or witness are affecting the jury and then what could be done to improve the court system. So that essay question is more challenging because it requires you to do both of those things. So talk about the characteristics of the witness and defendant, how they impact the, the jury and their attributions of guilt. But then as a consequence of that, how can you improve the court system? So hopefully you find this helpful. I